What's up guys, it's Jonathan Garcia back with another YouTube video. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you guys how to restore rusted old beat up weights and make them look brand new again. I picked up this set on Facebook Marketplace for just $500. You guys are missing out if you're not checking on Facebook Marketplace for amazing deals. A lot of the times people will buy this stuff and they'll say, hey, I'm going to get fit and then never use it. So we're going to be starting off with a wire brush. The, the reason why we want a wire brush is to get that surface level rust off. And of course, we're going to use some WD-40 to kind of make that process a little easier. So as you can see here, I'm saturating the rusted parts in WD-40. Now WD-40 is a cleaner so that's going to be help us break down that again that surface rust. So once we got that nice and soaked now we're going to apply some elbow grease. I like to use a really tough wire and this stuff is really messy it's going to sling WD-40 everywhere so just make sure that obviously you put a towel down and you pretty much want to go ham here. They do sell some electric um, drill heads that have wire brushes but I've always I've used those in the past before to restore metal and they just never come out nice it's, I feel like I can't get an even kind of pressure on everything and this does the trick great You can already see here they're starting to look a lot better so you're gonna have to take your time with this these have been sitting in this guy's garage without being used for a very long time and they were actually really not that bad mainly because he did keep them in the garage i've restored some weights before that were outside or in someone's shed for years and years and years so don't get frustrated if on the first pass it doesn't look amazing it's going to take several passes to cut through all the layers of rust but again these weren't that bad and you just want to wipe and keep going and sooner or later it's going to look very polished and really really great I mean these almost came out in my opinion as, as good as new so again just take your time and look at that I mean all that surface rust is gone the knurling is pretty much kept intact dumbbells the knurling on dumbbells really doesn't get beat up that bad it's the exterior weights that do here's a closer look and much better than what we started but still a little bit of ways to go We're going to go with Rust-Oleum. That's going to do one of two things. I really like Rust-Oleum, main thing because it stops rust from reforming. So the whole purpose of this is to, you know, obviously get the rust off and stop the rust from coming back. So I really, really like Rust-Oleum. And it's honestly one of those paints that it's not super, super expensive. They've been around forever, so you know that this is gonna be the right one for you. Another thing that you wanna grab, and I highly recommend, do not be spray painting without it, is a respirator. Make sure that you wear this, guys, and you wanna spray paint in a well-ventilated area, okay? And the next thing we're gonna do, need is, and of course I left it over there, I'll be right back. We're gonna need is some masking tape because Unlike the hex ones, these have a proper grip on them, and they're, I don't want these to be black on black. I want them to be um, as, you know, uh, raw or, because this one has a little bit better textured knurling. These, again, are pro series ones that you'll typically find in kind of like older gyms, and I really, really like. These things will last a fucking lifetime if you take care of them, and again, that's the whole purpose of this video. You're able to restore them. I like frog tape better than blue tape. I just feel like it just work, peels off a little bit better. But you can use whatever tape you have laying around. It's not that big a deal. We're going to wrap the grip again to preserve that nice knurling. And like I mentioned, I'm not too worried about this rust on the side. Um, that's not a big deal to me. We're going to go ahead and just spray paint that all. Even the end caps right here, go ahead and spray paint that as well. So everything looks nice and uniform or as close to the previous ones we've done. This may seem like a whole lot of work, but honestly, guys, it's really not that bad. For, and the end result is fantastic. These came out 
practically brand new. And again, when you're building a garage gym, you know, this stuff can get super expensive. Last time I tallied everything that was in my personal garage, I have spent over $20,000 on equipment. All right, guys, now that we have everything kind of brushed and taped up here, the green tape to protect the knurling, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, oh, next step that I'd like you guys to do if you do something like this is because we use the WD-40 to wipe everything down, some of it leaks and it gets a little bit greasy and that's gonna really affect the finish of the paint if there's WD-40 uh, still on the metal. So you wanna go ahead and use some wipes, maybe some alcohol wipes and whatnot. Go ahead and wipe them down really, really good and let them dry fully and then spray paint them. So right here, we're just gonna spray paint them. Um, we're gonna do one side. We're gonna get all the coverage we can, wait till tomorrow and then flip it and then do the other side so they come out nice like these over here. Again, you wanna make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area or your respirator and yeah guys, kick back and let's see how these come out. I know to some of this may seem tedious and say, hey, you know, it'd be just easier to buy this brand new. But I'm telling you guys, I personally think that little projects like this, one, are kind of fun to do. And you learn a little bit here and there about painting different plastics and metals and whatnot. And also, too, it's a little bit more rewarding, you know, when you, you do something like this and they come out really awesome knowing that obviously you save money and then you had a little cool project to work on. This I actually um, worked on when I was recovering from my appendectomy. So I couldn't lift these weights, but it was really positive for me to do something in the gym that kind of made me look forward to training again, which that was really nice just to kind of give me something to, to do and, and to think positive. I was kind of in a negative mindset so again guys, little projects like this can be super, super awesome. You wanna remember when you're spray painting, try to stay about six inches away from the object that you're spray painting and always be going back and forth, moving the can because you don't want any ugly drips. Black is probably the most forgiving color when spray painting, especially when you're doing a smooth surface, but it's still nice to kind of practice those things to get a nice clean finish. I was going back and forth on whether or not I was actually gonna write the numbers in like a red pen. So that way, you know, the, the main part of the dumbbell would be black, and then you have the red lettering to dictate, you know, what size dumbbell it is or how heavy it is but i opted for just the uh, straight black like you guys will see and i think it came out really cool as you guys saw in the beginning the dumbbell rack this guy had given me included for, for the price was just a little janky dumbbell rack but i was gonna roll with it but this is just how cool life is sometimes the next day after me finished painting uh after i finished painted all these dumbbells my good buddy, which is also my neighbor, hit me up and was like, hey, dude, what are you doing? It was like 8.30 at night, and I was like, nothing, just watching TV. He's like, all right, cool, let's ride. And he actually found me a free dumbbell rack this guy was giving away, and I thought it was just going to be a janky rack, but check it out, guys. It was actually a commercial-grade dumbbell rack. Check that out. And, of course, it was a little rusty, a little janky, but like we said, ain't nothing like a project, so we... Bam, threw some red on it, and it ended up looking fantastic. And again, this was free. A guy just had it laying around. And that, guys, is a job complete. Now, I'm taking this video several, several months later, but I wanted to show how good it's held up. I went ahead, and if you notice, there were some white letters. I went ahead and painted over this plastic with acrylic. There were a few pieces of these dumbbell kind of cradles that were missing. So I had to buy some on Amazon, but that was no problem whatsoever. And like I mentioned, I kept the lettering black. I was thinking about doing it in red, but I quite didn't like 
all that extra red there. And then guys, you guys can see, I kind of wish they were all hex or the kind of classic style ones, but it's not that big a deal. Um, for the price that I paid, if you guys know anything about how much these go for, it's crazy sometimes what people want for these dumbbell racks. I mean, you know, some people charge, I think the going rate is like a dollar a pound um, aftermarket or, you know, after people kind of like, or, or sorry, second hand is the term I'm looking for. But I mean, to buy from basically 20 pounds all the way to 120 um, for 500 bucks is a crazy steal, getting the dumbbell rack. And again, guys, if you're thinking about starting your own garage gym, there's so many people who buy these things and they never get used. And it's just sitting in the garage, taking up space. People want to get rid of it. Um, here is the uh, Pep and Fitness handles that I did a video on. Those don't get a lot of love now, obviously, since I have these. I really kind of prefer the fixed dumbbell. And I'll be honest, those, it, <laughs> there'd be times where I would be a little bit lazy and wouldn't change the weight to a heavier weight or lighter weight if I needed just because of the inconvenience. Nothing beats being able to come, grab the 20, oh, that's too light, and then you come, okay, we'll grab the 30, or grab the 35. Something that I am gonna be doing here soon is getting rid of the increments of five. So you see how I have 30, 35, and then 40, because Jessica actually bought me these. And these are actually called plate mates, and they're magnets. I mean, this is such a great idea. They're magnets, these are about a one and a half pound. So what you do is, let's say that, okay, I've got these 40s here, but I kind of want 45s. Instead of needing the room for 45s, you grab this, it's a strong metal with rubber on the other side, and you stick it on here. And then you come and you stick the other one, which I'm using the other one right now for my dumbbell rack. See if I can do this one-handed, maybe. Boom. And then you come here, bam, stick that on there. So now this is, look at that. That ain't going anywhere. A 45. And then when you're done, take it off, stick it back in the metal, and look how convenient that is, y'all. That was a super cool thing. I found these, I think Coop from Garage Gym Reviews did a thing on that. And I was like, oh, I gotta get those. So what I'll be doing here soon is getting rid of these, probably selling selling the off ones, like the, the increments of five, and then maybe getting some heavier ones. On the dumbbells, I can probably go to about 120, 130, but I don't like going that heavy on the dumbbells because I do often train alone. Well guys, I just want to thank you for tuning in and watching the video. I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent on uploading. These are projects that I like to do just for fun. No really motive behind these. Say hey to my beautiful baby cradles. You look at them. Adorable. And these are, again, the Pepin dumbbells that I was talking about. I use the rack as well for storage. So while the rack does take a lot of space in the gym, it also helps me hide a bunch of things or, I guess, organize a bunch of things a little bit more neatly. Well guys, that's this video done and dusted. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next one.